Hello, this video is about the idea behind my RFID Tag Finder or RFID Tag Detector as I used to call it. This video will answer three questions. What is the detector's purpose? What are its capabilities and limitations? And finally, how does it work? Now let's come to the first question. The purpose of the RFID Tag Detector is to find RFID tags that are hidden in everyday items. It can be used to search for RFID tags and pieces of clothing, like I have shown in my video about hidden RFID tags in your everyday life. It also can be used to test if your credit cards, ID cards or tickets contain RFID tags. Let's come to the second question. What are the capabilities and limitations of the detector? When the detector is switched on, it is first nulled so that the meter is in the mid position. If it now comes near to an RFID tag, it is giving a clear positive reading. If an RFID tag is destroyed, like I do here with this side cutter, the detector is no longer giving a reading, proving that the tag is now completely dysfunctional. If it is brought near a metal object or touched with your hand, it gives, if calibrated right, a negative reading. It is, however, a purely analog device and thus unable to read any digital information out of the tag. Searching for tags on metal surfaces will also be difficult. Let's come to the final question. To explain how the detector works, I will show you the circuit which I devised for it. The most important part is the oscillator circuit. It is a so-called Pierce oscillator which is generating a sinusoidal alternating voltage at the fixed frequency of 13.56 MHz. This frequency is stabilized by the oscillator crystal X1. This alternating voltage is then amplified by an RF amplifier stage that is inductively coupled to the oscillator. In the collector branch of the transistor Q2, you see a resonance circuit in which you find the big coil that is outside the casing of the detector. I call it the detector coil, which must be custom made. The same is also true for the RF transformer, which connects the RF amplifier stage to the oscillator. How to build up these custom parts can be seen in my video series titled How to build an RFID tag detector. To finish the RFID section of the circuit, some LC filters must also be added to suppress wild oscillations. The circuit is then supplied via an AC adapter or 9V battery. The operating voltage can be adjusted by a positive voltage regulator of the common LM317 type or similar. In addition, a negative supply rail is needed for an operational amplifier type LF351. A meter which should allow positive as well as negative readings is then connected to the op amp's output pin. The op amp, which is configured as a differential amplifier, is comparing the voltage across a current sensing resistor to a fixed reference voltage. The voltage across the current sensing resistor is directly proportional to the current through the RF section, which is mainly comprised of the emitter current of transistor Q2. This current slightly increases as soon as an RFID tag comes near the detector coil that operates on the frequency of 13.56 MHz, as most tags do. To null the op-amp and to calibrate the factor of amplification, additional resistors and trimmers are necessary. Furthermore, a voltage reference circuit must be added. In this case, I went for another voltage regulator. This, however, is unnecessary. A normal voltage divider is enough and is an easier alternative. What you see now is the complete circuit diagram of the detector. Instead of, or in addition to, the analog meter, some LEDs can be used as indicators. Now some of you might have noticed some similarities between this device and so-called grid dip meters, as they were widely used by radio amateurs. But other than a grid dip meter, this device works with a single fixed frequency and has an RF amplifier stage that makes it possible to add features that go beyond mere detection. The RF section of the circuit can be refitted to serve as a relatively powerful, mobile, 13.56 MHz transmitter. To do that, the detector coil is removed and instead replaced by a second RF transformer, which is then connected to an antenna. 
By adding another transistor, this circuit can be used as a simple transmitter that can also be modulated. But about the purpose of this implication, I will tell you more in another video. So if you are still interested and if you want to see how the detector can be built for real, watch the other videos of my video series How to Build an RFID Tag Detector. Thank you for your time. And for all those who are interested in it, here's a list of all the component values.